Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. I welcome you here today at Genesis Upper Room. Is there any first-time visitors here? First time. Stand up, please, those that are your first time here. We welcome you here at Genesis Upper Room. We just thank you. We, we just pray you have a wonderful experience here. That you would experience. Stand up. No, no, no. I didn't say sit down. You can't be that tired. I'm older than you. <laughs> but we welcome you here tonight in Genesis Upper Room. And we just pray that you have a wonderful experience here with the Holy Spirit. Not a man, not a pastor, but the Holy Spirit wants to, he wants you to reveal, to, he wants to reveal himself to you, that he is alive, and that he's a loving God. I welcome you the first time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This message that the Lord gave me, um, he gave me this message two weeks ago, that he wanted me to bring this forth. And I was kind of battling, like, do you want me to talk about this or that? Because there's so much to talk about with the Lord. Amen? And we're going to be reading in the book of uh, Ezra, uh, Nehemiah. So if you, can, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Nehemiah chapter 3. If you have your phones, turn your phone to Nehemiah chapter 3. If you don't have either, you can probably watch us later. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But this message is the ten gates. And when I first thought about this, the Lord gave me this message. It was about rebuilding the walls. You see, God, he's not interested about a building, about a church building. What he is interested in you, in your hearts, in your lives, he's, he's rebuilding, he's restructuring. He's putting you back together again. Amen. Hallelujah. God is not interested about denominations, religion. His, his, his heart is towards each one of you. Amen. Amen. Are you all with me in uh, Nehemiah chapter 3? If you are, say amen. amen. I like that sound. <laughs> I like that sound. Glory to God. The rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and the ten gates. It starts at the sheep gate and, and ends with the sheep gate. It tells the story of the gospel. Now, who would think that the walls of Jerusalem would, would reveal the gospel in it? And, you know, in the Bible, Jesus said that everything from the prophets and from the Old Testament, it, it was revealing about him. Everything we, re we read in the Bible, it's revealing Jesus. That's what it's about. Amen? Amen. Amen. The first one is the sheep gate, amen, in Nehemiah 3.1. So are we there? Okay, I can read this. Then Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built up the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. They built as far as the Tower of the Hundred and consecrated it and then as far as the Tower of Hanel. That word, the name Elisha, what it means is God restores. Yes. Again, saints, God is not restoring a building. He's restoring each one of us. We all have problems. We're all going through things. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But God is the healer. He's the one that restores everything. He's restoring that right relationship with us, with, uh, with him, us to him. Yes. Amen? That's what Elisha means, God restores. Amen? This is where Jesus entered Jerusalem. The sheep gate is where Jesus, a lot of times, there's many gates, but a lot of times he entered through the sheep gate. Amen? Amen. The sheep gate was used for animals for the sacrifice. In John 1.29, brother, we got the John 1.29. Hallelujah. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes the, the sin of the world. Yes. You see, Jesus, as he entered through the sheep gate, he was saying that I am the, that sacrifice. I am that lamb, that perfect sacrifice that takes away the sin of the world. He took away not just the sins of those, but my sins. Yes. 
your sins. The sins I did yesterday, the, day, the sins I'll do today, the sins I'll do tomorrow, Jesus already washed them away. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go and sin because I don't want to go back to the filth. Amen? Amen. The sheep gate was used for the animal sacrifice in John 1, 29. He takes away the sin of the world. This gate symbolizes the cross of Christ. This is where we start with God. Each one of us, we have to humble ourselves and come to the Lord. We have to say, Father, forgive me, for I've sinned. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I remember when I came to the Lord, and, and I know my wife and my mother were praying for him, and many people were. And the Lord dealt with me at a night nighttime one time, and I was ready. I was ready to serve God. I mean, I, I just, I was, the, my, my heart was, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. It's not a place that God made for people. Amen. It's for those angels, those, those, devil, those angels that were disobedient to God. So when that message came, I didn't hear a thing. My heart was already set. My heart was already in tune with God. When the, when the minister says, anybody want to receive the Lord? I went up there. I didn't know what the message was about. He says, what do you want, friend? I said, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> that was my only concern. And I know people, don't laugh at me because I know some people around here too. Yeah. You know, we're, we're just people. We, I don't want to go to hell. Yeah. Yes. And see, God loves us. Yes. And he, fr he forgave me. That's why Jesus came. Amen. The sheep gate is a symbol of the cross. Yeah. I come, Jesus, the Bible says that he died on the cross for my sins. He took them all away. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 2, when we read this, it says, Next to Elisha, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, Zakur, the son of Imri, built. Now, forgive me if I don't say these names right, you know, but I know the Lord isn't concerned about the, the way I pronounce the words. Amen? But Jericho is a place of a curse. Did you know that? Jericho is a place of a curse. We live in a world that's cursed with sin. Now, it's funny that the Bible says that Elisha, the men of Jericho, built next to Zakur, the son of Emery. So what does that mean? Amen? It says, Jericho is the place of the curse. These men work next to the sheep gate. In Joshua 6.26, turn to there, brother. Joshua 6.26. It says, then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city, Amen. Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up his gates. Jericho, de J Jericho. Joshua declared this curse after they destroyed the city of Jericho, that this city was cursed of any man built. He would, he would give his son, his sons would would give their life for the, for the building of this, 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 this city. It was cursed. And you, we read later on, uh, King Ahab, there was a man that, that, that built, uh, he used his sons to build the city, and they died. We live in a cursed world, saints. Only Christ's death on the cross can remove the judgment of sin from our lives. It's, it's not by chance that the sheep gate is symbolic of Jesus Christ, and these men of Jericho who were in the sin, in this world, they were working right next to him. They had to come to the Christ, to Christ. Each one of us has to come to Christ Hallelujah. for our salvation. Amen. The next one is the fish gate. And we, can we turn there to Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 3? That's why I say just get the Bible and just read it with me. But Hallelujah. It says, also the sons of Hasena built the fish gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with bolts and bars. Jesus said, I will make you and me fishers of men in Matthew 4, 19. Can we turn there? Matthew 4, 19. This is what the Lord wants. He wants, he wants to use us. 
You know, we're not, we're not a, 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 like a piece of, you know, a paper, a cookie and a paper cutter where each one of us is stamped out, you know. God uses us because he created us differently. Yes. He can use each one of, we, each one of you can go places that the other cannot go. And he uses your, your, your personality, your attributes. He uses you. Amen. He uses you. Yes. Amen? Amen? He says, Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is our call, saints, every one of us here. God is raising you up. He's teaching you. I love this. There was a message the Lord gave me. It was love, men, train, send. You see, God drew me to him by his love. He mended my, 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 my heart, my, my spirit being. He's corrected me. He's loved me. He mended me. He's training me. Some of you are being trained. It's not by chance that you've come here to this ministry because the Lord is building you up. He's trained you. Some people have come to this ministry. Uh, other, other ministries have, have, have hurt them. People of God, ministers of God have hurt them, and there needs to be a healing, a restoration. You see, this is what God does. He loves you, he mends you, and he trains you. And when he trains you, he says, go forth. And make, he's making you fishers of men. He sends us. Amen. That's good. Every one of us can speak for the Lord. Amen. Amen. After the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit is the day they became fishers of men. Let's just turn to uh, Luke 24, verse 49. Amen. Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. You see, there it is, saints. Two, what was it, two months ago when we had the, the, the day of Pentecost. Yes. And in the book of Acts, it talks about that the power of God came upon the people and they were endowed with power from on high. We need this, saints. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to do what God has called us to do. Yes, I could not be here standing here before you if the Holy Spirit hadn't baptized me right. with his power. Amen. I, this, this anointing, you know, you can't be up here preaching in, without the anointing of God. That's right. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings the anointing upon, yeah. of God yeah, yeah. that you're able to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. I don't lot rely on my own power, my own strength, my own knowledge or wisdom if I have it, you know. <laughs> God is the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. He's my, yes, my, yes. my strength. Amen. This is in Acts 2, 14 through 41. I'm not going to read that tonight. Acts 2, 4, 14, but 41. But this is an assignment for you, and I'm just going to briefly go over it. Peter, the apostle Peter, he denied Jesus three times. And how marvelously God used Peter to minister the first gospel message. The, the message was so strong and so powerful that it pierced the hearts of those that heard it. And they said, what shall we do to, 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 be, you know, for, to, to be right with God? What shall we do? Peter said, just believe. And if you look at that, I think it was like 3,000 souls came to the kingdom of God. Amen. You see, saints, it doesn't matter how many people you witness to. If you bring one person to the Lord, we don't know how many people that person will bring to the Lord. That's right. Amen. I remember a pastor... He used to say, God can count the seeds in an apple. You can count the seeds in an apple, right? But only God can count the apples in the sea. If you can touch one life, we don't know how many people that, that, that will touch. Amen? Amen? You're very important. God, our Father, has called us to, to do this work, and we're capable of doing it. Yes. The enemy, he wants to bring fear upon you. He wants to bring your past upon you. Remember when you did this and you said that? Amen? When I came to Christ, all my sins are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west. It doesn't, it doesn't meet east and west. If I say go east, you can keep going east or east, but you'll never touch west. That's how far God's forgiven us our sins. And when the enemy tries to bring up your past, you just tell him, get behind me, Satan. You have that authority. 
So you can do that uh, little read there, read that later on. And Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 4. Nehemiah 3, verse 4. And next to them, Miramoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Koz, made repairs. Next to them, Meshulam, the son of Bershiah, the son of Mishabel, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, the son of Bana, made repairs. Amen? Try reading that. That's hard. <laughs> if those men were there, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I messed up your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We read of people who work to rebuild the walls. Their names have been recorded in the book of life. Amen. You see, saints, it doesn't... We, I'm not here to, to make a name for myself. I'm not here to, to, to walk down the street, oh, there's Pastor Fred, hi, Pastor Fred, or, or bring any honor or glory to me. We're not here to, to puff ourselves up. We're here to exalt the name of Jesus the Christ and God. Amen? That's what our calling is. So even though these men, I mean, that's all they did, their names were written in the book of life. Your work here tonight whether, what you're, or tomorrow, whatever, no matter how great or small, it does, our name doesn't, we don't have to be exalted. We don't have to be popular. Amen. We're just called to do what God has said and to be fishers of men. Amen. Amen. That's each one of us. Amen. We can all do it. Amen. And Nehemiah 3, 5. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs. But their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. Hmm. It doesn't say why these nobles didn't help. But it's something that these nobles were next to the fish gate. Again, saints, it's not by chance that every, every man was in a certain position. It's not by chance that you're here tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, these nobles, they, they, they didn't put their hand to the work. They were too good or whatever. The Bible doesn't say that. But it's not... But it's something to see that they were, plant, they were right there by the fish gate. The fish gate is what speaks of witnessing. You see, we're all called to witness. I wanted my first time to witness. I was like, blah, 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 blah. You know, I didn't know what to say. You know, I didn't know. But see, God filled my mouth. Amen. Amen. I'm here today. I didn't want to preach. They told me, Pastor, they told me when I was just like you guys sitting there, one of these days you're going to preach, I took off. I said, I ain't going to preach. Not me. I don't, I don't know that much about the Lord. I don't know that much about Scripture. And I know you're in my boots, too, if you could wear them. Amen? We're all in that state. We got to start somewhere. Amen? We got to start. This world is in chaos. And we as believers of God, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We have authority. We have power. Amen. When we preach the gospel, signs and wonders will follow. The Bible says that when you start speaking the gospel, the, that the, the Lord is working alongside you. This is the manifestation of the power of God Amen. that we're able to minister, to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The Lord will give you a word to speak to somebody, and they'll, they'll, it'll blow their minds. Hallelujah. You see, the Lord will give you a word of knowledge. Certainly, don't go there, sister. Don't go there because that's, there's, there's nothing good there for you. You see, this is how the Lord works. You can give a word, saints. You can give a word. That's what God's built into us. So it speaks of witnessing in Proverbs eleven twenty six. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessed will be on the head of him who sells it. The grain is, is uh, let me see what I have right here. It says that he that withholds the grain, the people shall curse him, and grain represents the word of God. You have the word of God. You're filled with the word of God. You come to services. You get prayed for. You get prophesied for. Amen? You're studying. You're studying in your, your daytime, your nighttime. You're studying, and you're full. Your vessel is full with the word of God, and you don't give it out. We hold it within us, and the people say that that will curse you because there's people that are going to hell. 
They're going to hell. And we had the word to speak to them. And we don't know if it could have changed their life. So we're withholding the grain. We're withholding the word of God. It's time not to be ashamed of, of the word of God. The word of God will take care of itself. The word of God will back itself up. When the Lord gives us a word, we don't try to wonder in our mind whether this is the Lord speaking to us. We just speak it because we know, I, I know like for myself, I can't think of these things. Number three is the old gate. The old gate. I like the old gate. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. That's just my hair is gray. It doesn't mean I'm old. <laughs> the old gate. That's verse 3 6. There we go. Moreover, Jehoda, Jehoadiah, the son of Pesah, and Meshulam, the son of Besodiah, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. In Jeremiah 6.16, I know I'm going to have you get going there, brother, Isaiah, but this is good for you. (laughs) Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. You see, saints, the Word of God, the Old Testament, the Bible, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. God is not a man he's, that he will not lead you in a path of destruction. He will not embarrass you. He will not hurt you. He wants to bless you. And God's Word has been proven over time, over years, over centuries to be right. That when we read the Word of God, and adhere to it, adhere to it, and, and do what it says, that we walk in peace. He says, ask for the old path where the good way is. See, the word of God is good. And walk in it. Then you will find rest for yourselves. How many people in the world today, you know, their souls, they're all messed up. Amen. Because they have no peace. They're walking in disobedience and rebellion to God's word. They're performing, they're, they're committing sin. And they have no peace. And this is what the Lord says, walk in my ways. And you shall be established. You shall prosper. Amen? How many of you want that? Every hand should be up. Every hand. I'm giving you a second chance. Every hand should be up. Okay? Because that's what I want. That's what we all want. We want a peace. People in in, in the world, there's that war. You think those people that live in those countries want war? They just want peace for their families. They want to be able to provide. They want a shelter. They want to feed their family. But there's no peace because there's, a, there's an enemy in this world. It's what we need for our day. Rest for our souls. Ask the Lord to remove all those things that rob our peace. Are you going through struggles? In your mind, there's no peace. There's no joy. You're fearful. You don't know what's happening. Ask the Lord to remove those burdens from you. Ask him, because when you give them to him, he gives us peace. Because his shoulders are broad, he can take it. Even the little things, you think they're small? They're not too small for God. And the things that are big, they're not too big for God. He wants his children to walk in peace so that the world would know. Look at this. Look at everything that's going on in this nation, in this nation. Gas prices are high. Food's going up all the time. Amen. They're talking about giving, you know, about wars. Do you feel at peace? You should. I tricked you. You should because we have Christ. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. If God is for you, who can be against you? I'm always remembered in the, in the, in the Old Testament when, when Israel was in, in, in Egypt, and Egypt represents the world. Amen. And the Egyptians, they were fearful because the Jews were, were multiplying, and they were, fear, they were feared. They were afraid that they were going to take over. So they started putting burdens on them. 
burdens that they wouldn't do, they wouldn't carry. They started, they wanted to, you know, uh, kill their children. What do we have? Abortions, right? Now every state, the court says that ab the abortion is, is illegal, but now every state can, can do what they want. That's not the will of God, saying Those are lives. Mm -hmm. Every one of those babies are lives. Amen. You see, so there's no peace. But we ask God, this is where we need to pray, mm -hmm. that God's kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. In heaven, there's no abortions. There's no wars. There's provision for everyone. There's peace. In Nehemiah 3, verse 8. Next to him, Uziel, the son of Hariah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs. Also next to him, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, made repairs, and they fortified Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. I've never been to Jerusalem. I've never seen the city walls, but I know those stones were big that they weighed probably thousands of pounds. And here's this man, Hananiah, a goldsmith. This wasn't, this wasn't his occupation to be to moving heavy boulders, stones. Their hands were fine. Amen? Amen. Even, even the next one, uh, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, this wasn't their occupation. They were probably used to working in the sun. I mean, look at my face. I've been in the sun. Amen? A lot of people can't be out there in the sun. It's, 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 just, it's not that they can't do it, but, but it's just they're not, that's not their calling. That's not what they do. But these men said, I'm going to go work for the, for the wall. I know this is not my occupation. I know this is not what I do, but I'm going to help. I'm going to help in any way that I can. I'm going to put my hand to the plow and work to rebuild these walls because the walls... Were for, uh, were for protection. It was to protect them from the enemy from coming in. You know a wall keeps enemies out, but it also keeps you in. It keeps you in that you don't go out and get hurt. It keeps you from going out and, and, and doing what God doesn't want you to do, that you would get hurt. The walls are for your protection. These men, who, who wasn't, it wasn't their occupation, they went out and did. They helped to the Lord. They helped. We have... One of the one of the, the volunteers are, are we need help. Yes. We're you know the position it doesn't matter if you're a banker or a governor or a lawyer or you're a, a, a shoveler cleaning footies, it doesn't matter. We all put our hand to the plow to exalt the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God. These see these men weren't accustomed for this kind of work. But they had helped in the rebuilding of the wall. It speaks of sacrifice. They made a sacrifice. Everything we do, me being here tonight, this is a sacrifice. Amen? You being here, it's a sacrifice. You said, I'm not going to go. I could go see a baseball game. I could go to the movies. I could go to the lake. I could go camping and get ready for, for the 4th of July. You made a sacrifice to the Lord. And God honors that. God loves that. God loves you. In Nehemiah 3.12, can we turn to 3.12? And next to him was Shalom, the son of Halohish, leader of half the district of Jerusalem. He and his daughters made repairs. We are all called for the work of the Lord, men and women. Men and women. Each one of us can, can, can share the word of God. Each one of us. The work is for men and women. We're all called to serve God. And it doesn't matter your age or your youth. God will use you if you have a heart to serve him in the rebuilding of his kingdom. The valley gate. This is the fourth gate, saint. The valley gate in 313. 
Hanan and the inhabitants of Zanoah repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refuse gate. I think we all work, we all walk through in the valley at some point in our lives. We do walk in the valley. It's the valley of the shadow of death. Every day we're, we're here in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen? But we walk through this valley. In Psalm 23, and we all read Psalms 23, but Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I love that the Lord is my shepherd. I follow him. We follow him. We read his word. We apply his word to our life, and we, we abide in his word. He says that he leads us. I shall not want. When I apply the word of God to my life, my family doesn't lack. And if I'm under attack, the Lord will fight for me. He defends me because I'm his child. My father is the king, and he, he fights for me. And he'll do the same for you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's no lack. How many people in the world are in lack? You know, they're talking about food shortages. This is all man-made. You know, it's not the first time that famines have come into this world. It's not the first time that man has manip manip manipulated. There you go. Thank you. Manipulated this. Amen? But look at, look at the world. People are still here. Israel is still here. How many times did they try to destroy Israel? And yet it's still here. Every day. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes I need to be said, push down right here. Brothers like this. You know? <laughs> I want to go out there. Wanna... No, God says stay here. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I didn't mean to point you out, brother. He leads me beside the still waters. You know, when the, when the saints, when they cross, when the, the disciples, when they cross the, 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 the Lake Genesaret or, you know, all those lakes, they were always in a storm. Did you notice that? They were all in a storm. But the Lord says that you'll walk by the still waters. Jesus said, peace, be still. Remember when they were all in the boat? And they were afraid. Jesus, we're, you know, aren't you afraid? Don't you care about us? We're drowning. We're dying here. We're dying. Jesus said, peace, be still. Yes. And there was peace. Amen. Thank you, <laughs> he restores my soul. What is he doing here? What's, what, why are you here tonight? He's here to restore yes. us. Yes. Restore our relationship with him. He, restore, he restores our soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, saints, there we go back again. It's back to the, the old wall. <laughs> you guys thought it was funny, huh? But we return back to the old wall. We read the Bible daily. We get it in us. We get it in us. And don't, think, don't, don't try to say, well, I can't remember all this. Some of the stuff I can't remember, but the Lord just puts it in me and, do, and I do it. But it's abiding in the word of God. Amen? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, every day we go out, what, what's going on? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For why? For why? For you are with me. <laughs> why for? Why for am I not afraid? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, God works brings Brings peace and comfort. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to laugh, saints. You prepare a table before me. And that's supper time. Amen. Look at me. That's supper time. Amen. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. I'm full. I'm full. You know, you you, you got to be filled with the Word of God first before your cup can run over. When your cup runs over, you're a blessing because you can give out the Word of God. You can pour it out, and God's able to pour more into you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And what? I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
I ain't going to hell. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to uh, Nehemiah 3.14. I wish somebody up here knew how to read those words, those names. Malisha, the son of Rechab, leader of the district of Beth Hakstherm, repaired the refuse gate. He built it and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. What's the refuse gate? It's where they, when they sacrifice the animals in the Old Testament, and those things that were not going to be burned on the altar, they threw out this gate. It was the garbage. It was the garbage. The dung gate is where the garbage was taken out, taken out, and uh, taken out. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, you see how he calls you his beloved? Even though we stumble, we fall, we ask God to forgive us, he calls us his beloved. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Those things that are not pleasing God, those things that we do in the flesh, God says, cleanse yourself of, of all filth." filthiness, and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Last week, uh, Sister Charlotte gave this word. I, it, was, it was very timely, Sister. And it was one of the things that she touched on was self-control. Self-control. You see, this is something that, that I need to ex uh, exercise more in my life. Amen. There was a man of God, Papa Morris Sorello. He said that each one of us here, every one of us here have, has the ability to say no to sin. Every one of you here, look to your left. Look to your left. Look to the right. Every one of us has the ability to say no to sin. But you know why we, you know why we, we, we sin? Because we want to. We want to. The Lord says that there's no sin that will not be forgiven us. We have to repent. Amen? Amen. We have to repent. Okay, so it's the cleanse ourselves of all filthiness. Let's turn to John, 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins... Amen. Amen. He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Saints, we have to confess before God. And I've shared this story with you. I'm going to share it because some of you have never heard it. And I'd like to share it too. But years ago, I was raised Catholic. And I did everything that, that as a Catholic we're supposed to do. I got water baptized. Amen. I did First Communion, amen, did all those things. And, and when we had to go to confession, and in and, and confession, it's been a long time that I went to church. I didn't want to go to church, okay? And I don't remember how old I was, but I would go into the, that booth, and I'd say, Father, forgive me, for I've sinned. You know, and these are, and, and these are my sins. And I said, well, it's been, I'm thinking, how many years has it been? that I've been to church. And I would say two or three, and in actuality was eight, ten years. So here I am lying to the priest. I'm lying to the priest. And he said, do ten Hail Marys, our, ten Our Fathers, and, and go your way. But see, my heart wasn't right. I had to understand that if that was God, I'd be dead. I'd be in hell. Amen? You see, we, we, when we come, we don't have to go to a man. We go to our Father in heaven. We get in that secret place. And so that's why we have to get before God in that secret place and repent to him. He knows. And he says, 
And when we do that, we ask, Lord, show me my sins. Show me my errors. That I would repent. You see, and when we do that, God washes it. As far as the east is from the west, he doesn't, re- he doesn't remember it. You know who remembers it? Us, yeah. But who puts it in our mind? The enemy. You tell the devil, get out of here. I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus is my righteousness. He's your righteousness. So when we confess our sins, we're in right standing with God. And where are we seated? In heavenly places in Christ. Let's go to uh, Nehemiah 3.15. The sixth gate, the fountain gate. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4, 14. Amen. Remember the, the, when we believe, when a believer is filled with the Spirit, he's not just a well, but a fountain of living water. That's each one of us. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're reading the Word of God, we're obeying it. We're not just a fountain. We're a fountain of living water. We're we're, we're giving of the Spirit of God. We're giving. Are you enjoying this? I'll tell you what, when I was reading this, excuse me, i got to wet my whistle, but when I was reading this, I was like, wow. You see, because this Word is not just for you. It's for me too. The next one is uh, the water gate, Nehemiah 3, 26. The water gate. Moreover, the Nethinim, who dwelt in Ophel, made repairs as far as the place in front of the water gate toward the east and on the projecting tower. You know, the people in the water gate, they had to go through this gate to carry water into the city of Jerusalem. There might have been a river or a stream or made it maybe later on, but there was a time where they had to bring water in. The washing of water by the word of God, John 5, 15, 3. 15, 3. The washing of water by the word. You're already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Jesus said this. You're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. You're clean. You know, I, the Lord gave me a, a teaching on this. Is Jesus says that, that we are clean before God because he died for us. But we live in this world. I live in this world. I'm clean. I'm clean from sin. Amen. But you know, in those days, they had to go to bathhouses. So they would wash themselves. Amen. And then when they walked back home, their feet got dirty. You see, the word wash... Washed, when, they, when he was washed, he was, we were cleansed. But there's a word, and I, I don't have my teaching here right now, but the, there's another word for wash where it washes a certain part. It's our walk with God. It keeps us from evil. It keeps us from temptations. It keeps us from sinning. We're already clean, but we need to wash our feet. The garbage that's in this world, whether we see on TV Wherever we go in the stadiums or movies or at work, uh, what we hear, our feet get dirty. And we have to wash. If there's any sin that tried to, to come up, we have to cleanse ourselves. Father, forgive me. So the word of God sanctifies them through the truth. The word is truth. The water gate pictures the word of God. We are washed by the word of God. Amen? You see, saints, God is not interested about building a wall, about building a city, 
or a church building. These, these are for us, for each one of you, for me too. The horse gate, Nehemiah 3.28. The horse gate, I already see somebody laughing already. After them, Zadok the son of Emmer made repairs in front of his own house. After Shemaiah the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate, made repairs. This is the horse gate. The horse gate was an animal ridden by a warrior. How many warriors do we have in here? That's right. Every one of us, our hands should be up. We are warriors for Christ. In Ephesians 6.12, in Ephesians 6.12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. God is raising up warriors. He's raising up warriors, and God's never lost a battle. I was the Lord, as we were worshiping, this is what the Lord gave me. And that's not in the, I didn't give you this, brother, so have mercy. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, it talks about David's army. David represents the Lord. Okay? This is his army. We are his army. We are in the army of God. Amen? Amen. Do you agree with me? David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, people are in distress. Everyone who was in debt. How many people are in debt? You don't have to put your hands up. That's okay. Because I'd have to put my feet up too. And everyone who was discontented gathered to him. This is the picture of the body of Christ. Are you happy with the things, the way things are going in our government? Our politicians? No. How many of you don't get? I mean, how many of you are in debt? How many of you know people that are in debt? Amen? How many of us are in distress? Again, don't put your hands up. But see, we're a part of God's army. These are the, the, we are the people that the world rejects. The world don't want you. The world says, you're no of use to me. Amen? But God says, I see something in you. I created you, and I, I've, I've created you to be who I've called you to be. You see, saints, our battle is spiritual. You see people walking down the road with, with, with pickets and signs and they're gathering together and, and, and they're protesting or what all that. But what is it accomplishing? What is it accomplishing? We as children of the Most High God have free access unto our Father, into the Holy of Holies. And we can bring our petitions our request to him. How many children, how many, the, the church, this is what God is calling the church to do, is to pray, yeah. to pray for this nation, to pray for your family, to pray for your brothers, to pray for your, your employer, to pray for your co-workers, to pray, pray, pray. pray, pray. This state needs a lot of prayer. Yes. This state, a lot of people are leaving this state, and I tell them, don't leave, vote that guy out. Vote them out. Ask God to put, put somebody in there that has a heart of God to serve the people. They're in there for themselves. Don't leave. Are you anybody you're thinking? Don't leave. Register, sign up, and, and get these guys out. That we would have peace in our land. Hey. We're almost done, saints. The East Gate, Nehemiah 3.29. Nehemiah 3, 29. After them, Zadok, the son of Emmer, made repairs in the front. I read that one, didn't I? 
I did, I got a head shake. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go to the east gate, Nehemiah 3.29. We're almost there. This is the ninth gate. Three twenty nine. I think I just read that. I think I got my numbers, my scriptures wrong because we're at 328, the warrior, the house, the horse gate. Now we're in 329. I might have messed up, but we're going to wing it right here. Every morning the sun rises from the east. Jesus is our light. Let's turn to Psalms 121. Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? Is there? Or did I, let's go to verse 2. If you got it. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You see, we don't put our, our, our trust in man. We don't put our trust in government and politics. We don't put our trust in money. We don't put our trust in strength. We put our trust in God. Every morning when I, look, when I get up in the, in the morning and I see the sun and it's just barely cracking up there, I have hope. Because my help comes from the Lord. Amen. When I need help, I cry out to him, help me. Amen? Each one of us can do that. You see, we have hope. This is the east gate. And we're going home here, saints. The tenth gate. The gate, Mif Mifkad, in Nehemiah 3.31. After him, Malchash. One of the goldsmiths made repairs as far as the house of Nathanum and of the merchants in front of the Nefkat gate and as far as the upper room at the corner. It means review or registry. That word, and if you can say it better than me, say it, Mifkad, it means review. It means a registry. When people, when, when people used to come into the, the town of Jerusalem, they had, to, they had to show a visa. They had to register in. They couldn't just walk in. Amen? Look at our borders. They're just walking right in. Amen? But there was... See, this is why it's important to have borders. Because people that are coming through, they're not for us. They're not for you. They have, they have, they have strange doctrine. And you know what, saints? Let me tell you something. When I read the Old Testament, one of the things that God hated was worshiping other gods, yeah. other, yeah. other doctrine. That's what caused the nation of Israel to sin, and they were exiled. It means review or registry. When a stranger came to Jerusalem, he had to register. It's also a gate of review and judgment. The judgment does not concern salvation but reward. You see, David's army, when they, when they, after a war, they would go through this gate, Mikvad, Mikad, whatever, and, and, and these men would, would lay their lives down for David. And they have a reward. You see, it's not about salvation. Your, your salvation is in Christ. You are secure. But it's talking about your work here on this earth. What are we doing for God? Each one of you, each one of you has a reward in heaven. It's in the word of God. He, he keeps his word. We have a reward in heaven. It's a reward of judgment and reward. Believers will be rewarded for the things you have done. We do everything in the name of Jesus that he would be glorified. That's what we do. And Nehemiah 3.32. It says here, I wrote down, we've been through the ten gates, and now we're back at the sheep gate. We begin with the cross of Christ, and we end with the cross of Christ. Amen? And between the upper room and the corner, as far as the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants made repairs. We started at the gate, the sheep gate. And we went around all the wall, and we returned back to Christ. First Peter 2, 4, and 5. I'm going to close with this. Coming to him as a living stone. 
You see, you are the, the, the stones. You are the stones. You're living stones. Coming to him. Who? We're coming to the Lord as living stones. Rejected indeed by man. What did I read in, in, uh, about David's army? And rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Thought I had more. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. That's what it is. You're building up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up sac spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Did you enjoy that? I did. You see, saints, it doesn't matter what condition you're, you're, you're in now. Jesus, God is the restorer. That's who, he, that's who he is. He's the restorer. He rebuilds our faith. He heals our, 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 our spirits. He heals us. That's what he's here for. God wants family. We are his children. And God takes great joy in his children. God loves to see his children prosper. Amen. We prosper when we follow, we, when we abide in the word of God. Which brings me to our tithes. <laughs> I love the tithe. I love the tithe. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3. Saints, let me, let me just share something with you. The devil doesn't want you to give. He doesn't want you to give. God says that in the old gate, remember the old gate? If we obey his word, if we apply his word to our lives, what? What's it going to do for us? It's going to give us peace for our souls. Amen? God wants his children to prosper. And I know in this time, in this day of age, amen, don't, 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 don't prepare, don't give your money yet. I mean, let me, let me at least finish this. <laughs> God loves you. you. You have a heart already of giving. Amen? But the enemy does not want you to give. He wants to keep you in debt. He wants to keep you in bondage, and he brings fear. Yes. Look at the gas prices. Yes. And I shared this before. I hate $6 gallon of gas. <laughs> I hate $7 gallon. It's not right. They're robbing us. And years ago, I was putting gas, and at that time, it was almost $5. It was like 4 something. And I was pumping gas in my, my truck, and I was mad. You know, and I was praying in the spirit, rebuking the devourer, rebuking... The, the thieves and all this stuff. And, and the Lord says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. My sister Charlotte, she said, God owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. We don't have to worry about the fruit prices. God will meet your need. He wants to prove himself to you. Amen. He wants to prove it, that what he says is true. He says, he says that all the silver and gold belongs to him. As a prince of God, as a princess of God, we have, don't have to worry about that. But we have to take a step of faith. We have to take a step of faith. Remember my story I was telling you when I received Christ in my life? I didn't want to go to hell. And I was walking out that night with my wife. I was holding her hand. And I told her, we're going to start tithing. I didn't know what tithing was. I didn't know. I just said, I'm going to start tithing. And it seems like a lot. You know, to me, it's a lot. You know, we, when we work for a living and I give 10%, I, right off the top. It's faith, saying God moves in faith. When you said, I'm going to stand in, 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 in faith in you, I'm going to believe your word, that you're going to keep your word to me. You see what it is, the tithing, saints, is putting our trust in God. Amen. That's what it is. The tenth is nothing. It's a lot to us. It's a lot to me, especially if you make a big check. That's a lot. 
Even in my, 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 uh, my income tax, I would give a tenth right off the top. Yeah, I could use it, but I need to plant seed. I need to have a harvest. And if I, if I eat my seed, I'm not getting a harvest. If you're eating the seed, you're not receiving the harvest. God wants to prove himself strong. He wants to prove himself mighty on your behalf. I love this scripture. It's, it's one, of my, one of my first messages. In verse Malachi 3, 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. And we're robbing God the opportunity to bless you. How in the world, when the Lord is blessing you through this uh, man-made recession, and, and you, all your needs are being met, and you're an example to the world, how are you doing it? What do you know that I don't know? Are you investing in a stock? Are you doing something? Are you dealing drugs? Are you doing something? How, how are you making it? Because you're not, you're not struggling. You're prospering. And your neighbors next to you, they're, they're struggling. How are you doing it? I tithe. It sounds crazy. But, it, but God's ways are not our ways. They're higher than us. They're higher than our ways. So we're robbing God of the opportunity to bless us. The tithe is the tenth. If I make 5000 it's $500. And I'm going to tell you something that it was difficult for me sometimes because I'm looking in the natural. I'm looking, we're, we're look, I'm looking in the natural. I got this to pay. I got the house to pay. I got the car. I got a family to feed. All this. I got, I got to pay the PG&E. I got to do all this. So I'm looking in the natural, and what does it do? It brings fear. When Peter was in the boat and he stepped out of the water, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on water. But as soon as he seen with his eyes what was going on, the storm, he started to sink. But I thank God for, for a believing wife because she said, write, write the check. I already wrote the check. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it goes to our account. Amen? My account in heaven. Amen? My reward in heaven. Because the money that I give, it's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. That's what it's for. I can't be everywhere. You can't be everywhere. There's God's place missionaries all over. And when you give to that ministry, you, you, we ask God, where do I give, saints? Where do you want me to give my tithe? Are you, are you learning in another church? If that's where you're growing in the things of God and you're learning, then that's where you tithe. But it doesn't mean you, can, you, you just have to give there. There might be a ministry. Maybe there's somebody on the radio or TV that you're listening to, and, and you're learning from them. And ask God, what should I give? You see, because you're advancing the kingdom of God, people are hearing the gospel People are being saved, being saved. Remember, saints, man can count the apples in the seed, but only God can count the, the seed, the apples in the seed. I think I said that right. But you know what I meant. <clears throat> he says, we've robbed him in tithes and offerings. He says, you're cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. This is what the Lord says. This is the old gate. We're reading the old gate now. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I, that's the Lord, that's God. If I will not, where did I go? If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. You're overflowing. Your cup is full, but God is he's, he's bringing the overflow. You're able to give to help somebody. Hey, I got too much bread. Here, take this. I got cans of beans here. I got bags of beans here. Take this. I got some milk. I got too much milk. Here, take the, give this to somebody that, that has need. You see, you're overflowing. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. I love that. God fights for me. He fights for you. When you take a step of faith and you're trusting God, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, your harvest, your reward in heaven. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Know that, 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 notice that that wasn't Pastor Fred. 
I'm just a paper boy. Amen. I'm just reading what the Word of God says. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land. You see, the tithing saints is putting our trust in God. Let's turn to Luke 6.38, and then we're going to pray for the tithes. Luke 6.38. These are tithe, that, 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 that there is the tither, the tenth. Now we're going into the, the givers, the givers. There's tithing and givers. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. With the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So how are we giving to God? How are we giving? You know, I'm going to tell you, let me get a little drink here, and then I'm going to pray for that. I remember I was working with a man, and he was Catholic. I'm not putting him down, but he was Catholic. And he said, oh, you know, all oh, the church, all they want is money. All the church, they just, I go to church, he's Catholic. He went to a Catholic church. All they, wanted, all they want is money. So I'd go in my pocket. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's the rattling of the coins in his pocket that change. You know, he's rattling this. He goes and he just put a little bit in the bucket. Amen? And I says, is that what you're giving? I asked him, how much did you make last year? He goes, oh, 45000 45000 and you're giving him change? As you're not even tipping God. You're not even tipping them. God says, the, with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You think God's going to bless them if he's, and he's making 45, 50,000? This is years ago. It was a lot of money back then. You think God's going to bless them? It's according to the measure. How are we giving? Are we giving grudgingly? Ah, oh, I got to hear this message, and that all they want is the money. You see, saints, that's the devil. That's the devil does not want you to give. God wants to bless. And I'm here today to tell you that God has blessed me and my family. And I'm sharing that with you because, because you know what? I'm not afraid to share it. Because God owns all the silver and gold. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. I want you to be blessed. God takes joy in his children to be blessed. 